Hey everyone, welcome back. I am back today. Oh, you guys, do you know I am back today? I think you do. I am back today with the Ruby Volume 7 soundtrack reaction. I am so excited, you guys. I say this every volume, but this one in particular, I just feel like there's been some tracks that I'm like, Oh, I can't wait to get into this more at that soundtrack reactions. So I'm just like dying, dying to get into it today. So if you're joining me early today, you know just what that means. It means you are one of my awesome patrons. Thank you so much. And as always, I am sending up those big old hugs right through that screen. And if not, still thank you for joining me today. I'm glad you're here. I do hope you consider supporting me that way. The link to my Patreon is going to be in the description down below. And if you are joining me on YouTube today, I would so love it if you could please like this video and subscribe to my channel. So, um, funny thing about the soundtrack, there is one song in particular that, it's been a few episodes now, but I remember hearing it and being like, I mean, I do this with all of them, but like, I remember just being like, whoa, that like this one, like this one I want to run to. I want to run to it so bad. And it's just like a real, um, I almost want to say it had kind of like a 50s vibe. I don't know. I could be remembering it wrong um, when I heard it. Just like in the background of the fight. Or was it a fight or was it something else? I don't know. Um, we'll get to it. <laughs> but um, so this morning I was like, I was like, oh my God. I saw, oh, if I had just done this reaction like a day earlier, I could like have it on my playlist right now. Because if you guys aren't familiar with how I usually do it, um, you know, I hear these songs while I'm watching the episodes but I don't listen to them at all like in depth until this reaction just so that again you know I can kind of be as like fresh on it as possible um so what you're seeing is as close as possible to like my first time ever hearing it it is my first time ever hearing it in its entirety um but it was hard you guys I'm like oh I know that I know that one so you know so as soon as this is over I'm going straight to my iTunes, putting this whole thing on um, on my my iTunes so that I can uh, enjoy it entirely in the future. So um, a few things I want to say about Volume 7 before I jump in, because I was pretty racked at the end of the last episode, and I'm pretty sure I was not putting together any coherent thoughts, or it's, I don't know. I have not, I have actually not gone back and watched it, um, my, my reaction, um, but I'm sure it was incoherent. So I just want to say that one of my biggest takeaways from this volume and the series in general um, is the very profound message that here you have Salem, who is so immensely powerful. And for all that power, she mostly is, is manipulating the situation slightly to make everyone destroy each other. You know, I mean, yes, it was a, there was a fall of beacon. I'm not saying like she's never directly attacked. Um, but even things like having Watts turn the heat. It's so, it's so indirect. You know, if she has this much power. She could be, and I think, she, I think the takeaway was she is going to be getting a little bit more directly involved now, which is a horrifying thought. But up to this point, she's been around forever. And everything she has done, I feel like, has been more or less just setting things up for people to destroy themselves, particularly in this volume, was when I really, really noticed that because everything that had been built up, um, I feel like a, a lot of it was, 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 it was all us. It was all just human, you know, just regular humanity who had built up these tensions, fear, paranoia, everything, and just a few little things moved around to make that all collapse in on itself. So I think that is a very profound message, not only for the series, but just for life in general, that like, and in and, and a, and a big message, I feel like, Ruby was trying to get across, like particularly in the Aesop's fight, 
um, at the very end um, was this is what she wants. Like, the, we, it, we don't, it doesn't have to go this way. And there were so many points. The Crow and Clover situation, like, just from the start, that whole situation from the start, where they're on the, the ship and, you know, there's so many points at which a different choice could have led to a different outcome. But when tensions are high and everything, it just does not take much. And I have to say, a lot of those tensions were were put in place, escalated, etc. by just people, you know? Um, certainly Salem has a huge influence. Um, and certainly even people like Ironwood have a have a point in um in being as just really I think terrified as they are you know we see a, we we really got to see firsthand a lot with Ironwood in this volume just being like almost like a PTSD situation where like just the trauma of of experience experiencing her um you know at the fall of Beacon and everything uh just really put him in such a state of mind um so you can almost see where they're coming from, but like just so many things could have gone differently. You know, it just never had to go that way. And, um, someone pointed out something just as the people in my comments are like geniuses. So I don't like to take any credit <laughs> that is not, you know, fair. Like I didn't come up with this on my own, but, um, someone pointed out something really good in that, um, what the Aesops have with Ironwood is obedience, you know, and and what what Ironwood is looking for in general with the people he's he's working with and um the people who are under him and the people who he's even working to serve as like a leader. He says he's looking for loyalty, but, like, what he's really looking for is obedience. What the Ruby team has is loyalty. They have this bond, but they're not afraid to call each other out when they need to. But at the end of the day, they know they have to work together. That's loyalty. Um, and I just, I just feel like, I feel like the whole situation is so layered that there's a lot of ways, and I'm going to wrap this up because I see that my intro is getting very long. I just want to point out these few things because I didn't get to say them so coher coherently in my last reaction. Um, there are um, a lot of places where you can see how the way of thinking led to you know, you can understand it, even if you know it's not right. But I feel like this is a lesser of the two evil situation that Ironwood has gotten himself into. And the problem is, just because something is the lesser of two evils, like the way he looks at it is, well, you know, I'm sorry about Mantle and everything, but like the whole world is in danger. But there's uh, there's always a third option. There's always another way. And ultimately, that will just lead to the, device, the, the demise of all of Remnant anyway. Like, it's not, it's not like that will real like, ultimately, um, a blow like that is not going to be good for all of Remnant. It really is not. Um, real quick, I will point out, people pointed out um, Ironwood's semblance to me, and that is something that kind of, like, it's an involuntary, almost um, similar to Crow's, that... Um, strength as his resolve when making a decision so that actually makes a lot of sense and it's something that I'm told is never really directly pointed out on the show so some people have taken time to explain it to me so guys I'm gonna wrap it up because I've gone really long here um I'm dying to get into this soundtrack let's get started Ruby volume seven Okay, so I'm about to start, and I will just say quickly that I have some notes to read on each song in between. So it's, if you've seen one of my soundtrack reactions before, then you know what I do. But I have an awesome individual who puts together my playlist and some notes for me, so I will be digging into those notes between each uh, song. So let's go with Trust Love, the opening theme. Oh my god. The artwork. Oh, the artwork is just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Wow. It's kind of uh, looking at the more idyllic, perhaps. But go out and do it! Make, make it happen! You can make it a reality! Love it. Mmm, yep. That's where we've been. Trust love. Yes. But believe, believe in, in hope and love and each other. Mmm. Oh my God, her voice though. Oh, it's true. There's like a clarity that happens when you step back and oh, ooh. Ah, it's uh, done. <laughs> we're we're in a fairy tale, people. Mm. Yes, it's it's not that. Yes, you don't have to escape. You don't have to escape from anything. You can you can make a good reality here. Yes, yes. I feel like this is from Ruby's perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The burning strong, sadly. Right. No. Believe in love! Trust love! I love it. Oh my god. Epic guitar solo. Yes! Oh my god, guys. They've done it again. This is... I, I just... I, I, won't, I won't get into it now because I want to hear the rest of the lyrics. But I just... I love that you can pinpoint, like, exactly... Where, like, the reasoning that, okay. It's, it's not, it's not easy, it's not a, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. My God. Nice. Yes. Yeah, that clarity will come with... We know Ruby's all about keeping that hope alive. Trust, love, believe in each other, and believe in, in in fighting for each other and keeping that hope alive. Love is the answer. Right. Love it. Also, kind of a re I feel like the all the references to eyes a little bit. Maybe a reference to the silver eyes. I could just be reaching with that, but I love it because I do feel like it's from Ruby's perspective. Um, all right, guys, that was phenomenal. Let's dig into our notes about it. Um, before I dig into the notes, I will say really quickly that I love how you can pinpoint um, the reasoning that Ruby and you know, a lot of our crew, but particularly Ruby is using throughout this whole thing, like the fear, the paranoia, all of that clouds your decisions. If you could just take a step back, believe in the people you care about, you would see very clearly what is going on here. So let's dig into our notes. Um, okay. Opening song is a classic, uh, not a classic rock song, but a, your classic rock song with themes that are explored throughout the volume about trusting and love. Um, my interpretation of this is to trust in those you surround yourself with friends and family and the people who you surround yourself with whom you love and love you in return are the people you should trust most. And together you can find a way to overcome any problem. That's, that's well, very well said. Um, the song by the end of the season is a direct contrast to Ironwood's ideals. He surrounds himself with only people whom he believes he stands above. Yes, he wants that. He wants that obedience from people. He, um, you know, he almost kind of wants like a blind loyalty, I feel like. And that's not... 
surrounding yourself with like yes people is that's that's not the key to good decisions at all um okay he knows best makes all the decisions he's not on equal ground with anyone in his in his mind and that's why he is so isolated the song originally had an alternate working title open up your eyes also lots of lyrics are referencing the volume one opening this will be the day the lyrics you're holding out for some romantic life maybe you'll wake up in a world of charm are similar to the lyrics you want a romantic life a fairy tale as well i knew that sounded familiar yes um, if you could only open up the door similar to the line, this will be the day, this will be the day we open up the door. Yeah, that's, that is so true. To somehow rest you away uh, from the way of harm is similar to your worlds in the way of harm. I know the dark's returning may hint to beware if the dark returns. Always hoping that a lightning bolt may refer to the line, we are lightning. Yeah, it's uh, reminding me a little bit of Nora as well, because I just always think of her when I think of lightning. When the day you waited for won't come, similar to this will be the day we've waited for. I like how they took... Okay, so this is why I love having the notes, because I love how um, when you take a little bit deeper look at the lines, they're almost um, referencing and or a little bit like contrasting the lines from the very first opening theme, um, which is just really spectacular. It goes to show all the love and detail that they put into these soundtracks. So, um, I, you know, guys, I, I said about uh, last volume's theme song that I think it's going to be my absolute favorite, but I'll tell you what, now that, now that I can sit back and like see the whole thing in its entire, I really think this one might be right up there too. And I know a few of you have said it's your favorite opening. So I, I totally get that. So, all right, guys, let's jump into the next one. The very next one. Um, let's see what it is called. Touch the Sky. Loving the art. Oh. Oh my God, I love it. I want. Let me hear a little bit more, so I can. I want to know, like, what this is about, like, who it's about. Just like the hope of. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, I love it. Just to, just about like how far they've come now. And like, yeah, they've all they've grown so much in themselves. Mirror reference, any chance has to do with wife? Mm. Oh! Like, we, we feel good! You know, like... Oh my god, I love this song! Oh... Uh, Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Even in our failures, there's lessons, there's growth. Oh my God, this song is absolutely beautiful. I love it. Just a... Uh, kind of getting a highlight of each one. Mmm, yeah. Hope is addictive. Yeah! This is gonna be my get up and go song. Ooh. Just like we're 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 on like a good path, you know? Before everything that happened happened. <laughs> I do feel like Yes! Yes! I do feel like this was the first one where like everyone was in a more or less good place. You know what I mean? At the beginning, 
Like we kind of like figured our stuff out. Heck yes! Woo! What is this? I'm hearing this rolling guitar. I love it. I, as, where was this played? Right, we've realized our potential, we've grown. Yes, we've learned to overcome self-doubt, believe in each other, believe in ourselves. This is so this is how they all were when they like got their new looks and all their new upgrades and they're like I feel like they were really all in like a good place for the first time in a very long time like yes there's a lot of crap going on but listen to the piano guys what is what is this what even is this 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 ear candy right now I love it but they were all in like a very good place as individuals as self-actualized individuals, you know? Both both teams had really, and then of course, you know, we start to, we start to pe peel away at, at, a, at a lot of things, um, particularly with, you know, like Ren and Nora and everything throughout the volume. But at this point where we're all getting our, our new looks and upgrades, we're like, heck yeah, go me has like a gentle, hopeful outro. I freaking love it. I freaking love it. I loved that. Let's, let's read guys. Let's, let's read about that. Let's read. Okay. Let me pull up my notes. Um, a nice pop rock song that has a very positive and uplifting tone. It plays during the landing sequence in episode three. I had a, just based on the art and also the tone, I had a feeling it was it was from earlier in the volume. Um, it uh, has very clear theme of everything beginning to look up for the team. It feels like all the anxiety and depression of volume six and all its revelations are beginning to fade as we gain hope again. They have new allies and old friends have come back. Everything is looking up and this song fits the beginning of the volume perfectly. There's some debate about whether the song is about a single person, but personally, I think it fits more a general theme for everyone of the crew. Ruby, uh, I, I, J N O R. I was, oh, did we ever decide like what the official, um, title of the, of the, of the other group was going to be with John and everything? I don't know. This says J N O R. How would you pronounce that? Um, and Crow. So I'll be totally honest. The first thing I thought of when the song first started was like, oh my God, coming out of the shadows of addiction and everything, you know, the revelations of the past and everything. The first thing I thought was like crow, like maybe finally, because, you know, think about that, like physically of coming out of, um, you know, even just the way you feel physically, not even to mention like mention mentally and, and emotionally coming out of, um, an addiction that was, I mean, it's, I don't know, if we'll ever get info like on exactly when it started for Crow, we know that it worsened and really reached a fever pitch more recently. But the first thing I thought of was Crow and like, oh my God, I must be like seeing the world in a different way for like the first time in a very long time. Um, but I do think I, I agree that it could be about all of them because we, we have this like great uh, start to the volume where, um, you know, we've worked through a lot of our own personal issues, anxieties, depressions, um, addictions, um, just uh, all kind, you know, gr grieving, you know, we had uh, some actual like kind of closure put for, for John and, and the team, um, last, last volume and, um, and kind of reaching this point where like individually, like, yes, as a world with, uh, as a, as our mission goes, there's still a lot of crap going on. But individually, I feel like they were all like in a fairly good spot, you know? And then the, the one that I'm thinking of the most over over the, the course of volume is like um, Ren. And to a degree, Nora having to kind of um, 
relive a lot, probably a lot of things that are kind of hard for her from her past of just like, we know she had grown up on the streets and everything and kind of seeing stuff like that with Mantle and now being on the other end where like you have some influence over the decision makers and getting really heated about that. Um, but particularly like Ren, I feel like his head got messed with a lot this volume. But besides that, I feel like individually, like particularly at the beginning of the volume, they're all in like a really good place and I just love that song it's so happy and positive that's gonna be my like that's gonna be my getting ready for the day song from now on like yeah love it okay um let's move on to the next one because so far the soundtrack's on fire oh my god I see this one I see this one is featuring Caleb and I think I know the one it is because I know, like, I know the only one that played, um, that had, like, another vocalist in it. So let's, let's jump in because it's going to be good. I really like this one in the fight scene. So let's jump in. Oh, very, oh, very, uh, oh my God, his voice is amazing. Direct, direct quote there. Oh, listen, listen to the change in voice on that line. Mm. So much of this, like, I'll protect you, I'll be this, but so much of it is about, like, I'm the best, I'm the... vocalist just changed the tone so completely I think it is the same vocalist oh my god So much of it is about like I want to help, I want to protect, I'm going, I'm going to do whatever it takes. But also, I'm getting so much about with like that kind of that tone of like no. It's a little bit about per person he's protecting, and it's a little bit about <laughs> due process. The name of the okay, that was that was nice. That was cool. That was a nice little touch. And metal's the name of his semblance. Like, a lot of it's positive. Like, I'll do anything to help you. And some of it's like, I'll do anything, even if, like, people are portraying me as a villain because the things I'm doing are so questionable. And so much of it, I think, is about, like, I'm so much better in doing so much. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting that vibe. He sees himself. He has like kind of like a almost like a messiah complex, don't you think? Like he's a he's like on the he thinks he's like the the hero of the story in a way to the point where like he can't do any wrong, perhaps. You know, I'm not trying to slam him because I think it's understandable. That's a good line. Yeah, he's and we know his semblance kind of helps his resolve. Mm. Ah. Mm. Which is actually something he, that he actually said to Ozpin, right? Such a good song too, oh my god. I mean, the, vo the vocals are unbelievable. Unbelievable vocals. Hero with a capital H. <laughs> because that's how he sees himself. He's like, I'm the hero. And I, you know, I, 
I don't hate Ironwood. I honestly think he crossed the line at the end, but I don't hate him. I get a lot of what he's... That was, that was absolutely flipping phenomenal. That, guys, can we talk about the vocalist, Caleb, who did... I think that's him all the way through, and I gotta say the... The change in his voice throughout that song is theatrical. It is theatrical. It's the only way I can put it. That was incredible. Um, let's let's read. Um, the song is interesting in a number of ways. First of all, it plays during um, the fight between Watts and Ironwood in episode 11, Gravity. Secondly, this song is the first song in all of Ruby that does not have Jeff or Casey on the, not even on backup vocals? Really? Wow. Jeff still wrote the music, but the vocals are by Caleb. I hope I'm saying this right. Hiles. I've, I'm so sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Um, he is a fairly well-known YouTube musician who has performed lots of covers, including um, some with Casey. So I believe that that is how he got recruited for the song. That is awesome. I need to go look him up. And it speaks very much about his prowess that Jeff felt comfortable giving him a solo song. That is so true. As for the content of the song, um, it gives us a very interesting look inside of Ironwood's mind. He sees himself as the hero willing to do anything to keep the world safe, even if that means sacrificing half of it. There are also, there are also a couple of interesting references in the song. First being um, due process reference to his weapon, um, which is called due process. The next line, metal I'll deploy, is most likely a reference to his semblance, which is called metal. Um... It is never mentioned in the series proper, so if no one has told you about it, a few people have, but I'm going to read this anyway. It is a passive semblance which um, strengthened his resolve, allowing him to follow through with tough decisions as well as allowing him to hyper-focus on problems. It helped ease the burden on his psyche from the consequences of his actions. Last, so in other words, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a, a detachment from the emotional turmoil that one may feel from making such life and death decisions in a way. That's kind of crazy. And it's a really says about a lot about him now that we know that, you know, your semblance is kind of a nature nurture thing, you know, to put it mildly. Um, Lastly, the line, you can't believe in honesty that your children can win a war is a direct reference to the same line that Ironwood says to Ospin in volume two, to which Ospin's response was, I hope they never have to. Yikes. Oh, guys. Um, incredible, incredible song. I really need to go look up that vocalist, um, artist after this because he just rocked it. And certainly, um, I think it was a very interesting look into Ironwood's mind. I don't hate Ironwood. I do think that he crossed a line at the end of the volume that I don't know if he can come. I think the point of Ruby is anyone can come back from anything. We all have choices and there's always hope. But looking at it from where I'm standing, it just looks like he can't go back on that at all. Um, and I think a lot of what Ironwood's going through is very understandable. And it's, it's almost kind of like a road to hell is paved with good intentions kind of thing, you know, to use that um, phrase, kind of like an old phrase, um, an old saying, because he really does want to help and save everyone. But the problem is when you lose sight of what is really right and wrong and what, you know, and you're just willing to do anything, you're just like, and, and I think it's interesting that his, his semblance does include like a hyper focus because it's almost like he has tunnel vision on this one thing. And it's like, okay, we have to destroy half the wall. Okay, cool. Well, what's, you know, so what's what we have to do to get it done. And then just like, and everything else just falls aside. Um, I don't think he's evil or bad or a villain or anything. I don't think he wants to hurt anyone. And that's, what's just kind of so tragic about it that, um, his but but yeah he does kind of like almost kind of have this messiah complex am i is that like a is that the right phrase to use i'm not sure but um but yeah i'll i'll wrap it up because i'm gonna rant about this all day but i ironwood is a character i feel like we could really seriously talk about all day because he is so layered and there's so many different ways to look at where he's coming from um so all right guys let's jump into the next one the next one is titled Brand new day. This is the one! This is the one! This is the one! Doesn't it kind of feel like a 50s song? Oh, is this about Blake? Is it about 
this part's about Blake. No one should have to feel that way. That does suck. Yes. Heck yes. That could be a lot. A lot of our characters claim my life is mine. Moving forward. That's right. Be your best you. The haircut. Watching them in that one song. <laughs> yes, I love that line. Little change up can make a big difference, I'll tell you. Oh, and now we're moving on to a different part. So that part was about Blake, clearly because of the haircut mention. You know what? Addiction sucks. Aww. I like how it has like a little sardonic twist on it at the end. So proud of you. I'm so scared for now. Enjoy the song. Ah, it's a bird reference because he's a crow. Yeah, heck yeah, baby. My new favorite song, guys. It's my favorite Ruby song now. It's my favorite Ruby song. It's official. It's on the books. Oh my god. What's like? What's gonna be our refrain here? I don't. I don't think refrain is what it's called. But you know, what's gonna be our little mid, our little midpoint in the song? Oh. And now we get. Yes. Maybe we're coming out of the fall of of the, the fall season. Yes. One. Don't play it. Was, mm -hmm. I'm getting a little I'm impatient on me. All right, guys. I adored that song. I adored everything about that song. I adore the bop, bop, da bops. I adored the positivity. I adored what it was about. Blake having this kind of renewal of spirit and just coming out of this dark time of her life and 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 having a pronounced um, change in here that kind of is represented by this outward change. And I think if you've ever been through like a thing, whatever, you know, like it could be anything. It's like 
sometimes it's nice to make like a, ch a change, what, you know, change to your appearance, change to your decor, a change to, you know, and I just love that. I flippin love it being also about, and I don't think I realized this when it played in the background, um, fully at least. Um, I love it being about Crow and coming through the pain of his addiction and seeing light on the other side. And I think the bird lyric was so perfect because of him being a crow. And also there was something about the lyric about when Blake, when it was Blake's part singing about the birds, did it remind anyone else of the song? What volume was it from? Where it's kind of like an unofficial ship song about Yang and Blake. And it's like, and the birds, they know what's going on. And I'm like, ooh, those birds, those birds. <laughs> Those birds be getting a, um, you know, quite, quite a, quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, it just, everyone, it's, you guys remember the song, right? Somebody's going to drop it in the comments and be like, it was this. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> for some reason, it just reminded me of that and I couldn't get it out of my head, but it works so well. I, guys, that was the one that was the end guys. I will have that looping eternally on my playlist just so you know it, new favorite ruby song of all time and that's really saying something guys because i love so many ruby songs okay let's read um this song played during the work montage in episode five sparks it has a very upbeat tone and message while the song plays over the montage in the show a lot of people think the song is both a blake and crow song not together but they are coming out of very dark places in the last volume and this is them finally overcoming their traumas and problems not a whole lot else here to say other than that um yeah well said well said i love it absolutely love it new favorite song of course we still have five six seven eight nine we still have a few songs left so maybe i should hold back on saying like anything's my favorite song but i think that's the that's the one i was thinking of with like almost kind of like the i don't i don't know what you would call the style but it's you know if you if you've listened to a lot of like 50s music then it kind of has that like you know just you know you know, if you're, if, if you're into music and you're into that sound, then I think you know where I'm going. I won't take the whole video to explain it. So, all right, guys, let's get into the next one because I am pumped now. Oh! Oh! We're jumping from 50s to 70s here with some disco. This is... Aww. It's in the shoulders, guys. Yeah, that they're they're that made me really sad. But then it had a good part too. Right, you're together forever. Yes, let her in. She's already the closest person to you. Aww, so they never really, uh, aww. So that's one interesting, I didn't really realize they weren't like together, together, together. You know what I mean? Like they had never said it to each other. I think the kiss said everything. He did, he kissed her back. So I would take that. It just said, just say it. Was a dish. Yes. Can they figure it out, please? So we never really. Oh. No, it's just Nora. Just get. Just Nora is not. Nora is relentless. Oh yeah, no. So giving it up is not on the table. Yeah, no. No one's saying end of anything, please. They never really did say like. I mean, we had a lot else going on, so they never really did kind of follow up on like. It didn't seem like Ren was in a very good place for like a lot of it. But it also like when Neo messed with his mind and we saw the tear and everything, um, he clearly loves Nori and cares for her. It's just, they seem to be on very different sides of this and I don't want that to tear them apart. And they had the kiss and it felt like, I don't know, 
like we never saw them like break up or anything, but it also kind of feels like, which I wasn't aware of, that they're not entirely together. Yes, you don't have to know everything to know you love each other. Yay, trust love, Ren. Oh, I was, I was just gonna say they should put the kiss on here. Yes, oh, he, guys, it sure looks to me like he's kissing her back. So I would take that as a definite confirmation of yes, he is. I mean, the arms are around, you know, he's, yeah, they're, he's clearly kissing her back. Love it. Ah! You know, I didn't realize that they had never like kissed before, before that, you know? Um, but the way they were fighting then kind of led me to believe later that they had never like come out and so we'd seen them like holding hands and stuff but they never came out and said like we're boyfriend girlfriend you know so that was like their first kiss or the first kiss we've seen but I think it might just be like their first kiss ever and we got to be a part of it Oh my god. Yes, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yes, the answer to that is yes. I, oh, no, it's up. Hang on now. It's trying to play the next song for me. You're getting, you just like Crunchy Roll. You're getting impatient. You can just hold on there. Guys, I love that. There are a few songs that I feel like if you pick them out from every volume, you could almost have like a solid 20 or so minutes of um, like a Ruby Roller Disco playlist. I think I'm onto something here. Um, and that's, that's one of them. I love their like funkier, like disco dance songs. Um, I think um, Gold, Shine, ah, there's another one, I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, this one, you know, you could, you could really, you could really have something there, guys. Just thought, does anyone have a roller rink near them? I am like care to try this out. Get some cosplay involved. I think that'd be a ton of fun. Oh my God. Um, okay, let's read. A very funky disco pop song all about Ren and Nora. It plays at the party during the election on episode six, A Night Off. It also features vocals from all Oh, another artist, Aaron Riley. Overall, this song is pretty straightforward with this message of theme. It's all about love, this volume. Love for each other, love for ourselves, love all around. Love. I like it. Um, I will say they did not directly like revisit the whole like, because we had a lot going on, guys. So, you know, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't focus too much on this the entire, you know, volume or anything, but yeah, Red and Nora need to stay together, guys. Like, that's, that's, don't, put some conflict in there. I get it, because it's interesting, it's interesting, but they're, they're together forever. They're together forever. Can we just agree? They're together forever. Love! Brought to you by Love. All right, guys, next one. It is called, oh, no, wait. I think I skipped one. Hang on. Okay, that's the, okay. Now we'll play it. Oh my god! Is that... Is this different vocalist? Who is this about and who is singing? Oh! Wow. Oh, this kind of sounds like. Oh my God, this song. This different vocalist. I love it. Ooh. Ooh. Is it okay? It's involved. It's involving Neo, perhaps. Oh, I want to know exactly who it's about because I'm getting some vibes about like kind of the situation with Ironbird, perhaps like Neo and Cinder. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, 
Oh! I, okay, getting some Schnee vibes perhaps? Okay. Oh, what a good line. I love the other vocals in here too, by the way. <laughs> Blow your little minds. Oh, guys, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some adorable art here. And I need to know what's going on. Is this, are there other vocalists? And I, there are other vocalists, I'm pretty sure, but I need to know what is going on in the specifics of this. So I cannot wait to get to the notes. I love this. This feels like a... Uh, ooh. Wow, betray total betrayal. Selfish abusers. Oh, lot of lot of anger, lot of betrayal, lot of Ooh. Listen to all the vocals in there though. I could tell Casey's in there. Oh, I love that line so much. I love that line so much. And you could you could feel her like Ugh! just get in there. Yeah. Oh my god, listen to the guitars. Oh, this this feels like this feels like a Ruby Power rock song that's what that feels like okay now it's gonna try to play the next one please don't until i'm ready all right i need to hear the notes on this because i need to know more please uh war here's a fun one the song is a quartet i knew it it plays during the fight between team ruby and the aesops in episode 12 with friends like these the vocalists are casey dawn and bennett adrian collin who did a duet with casey last volume and lastly aaron riley guy do you remember that um, the duet from last time. The themes of the song are about the rift that's open between Team Ruby and the Aesop. So I was wrong all the way around. <laughs> okay, that I could see. Oh, because yes, we do. We do get them um, having like that that kind of confrontation at the end about like we thought we were friends and everything. And um, John Bennett voices the character. Oh, Elm, the Ace operative. Okay. Oh wow, that is really cool. That uh, one of the actual voice actresses of the show is included in one of the so I really like that guys okay yes that that to me some of these feel like a little bit more experimental and I love them like that's not that set is a it's they're very good songs that one to me like if I heard that I'm like oh my god it's a ruby song like that felt a hundred percent like a ruby song to me um all right guys that was very good I love the art for it as well let's let's jump in we've only got a few left here actually We've only got a few left. Next one's called Celebrate. Oh, we got Lamar on this one. Yes. I live for the Lamar songs, guys. Oh, this is okay. Another good one for your dis roller disco playlist. Yes. Sounds like another vocalist in here too. A lot of, a lot of, that's Casey. I'm feeling it. There's no prescription for this fever. <laughs> Dance floor elation is incurable. Oh, yes, the only cure. Oh, I just love it. I just, this is what's playing during the party, yes. I don't know if it's about anyone or anything. I think it's just like a happy song. Oh, yeah! Just that wonderful moment before everything went to crap. I I am all about like a roller disco, a dance party featuring Penny. Oh, I'm all about this. This 
this this is like a this feels very very disco-ish. <laughs> oh, reliving those scenes is so fun. The victory's in sight because it was until everything got like totally messed. I just love this. Just, I know you're all grooving at home. I know you are. Ah, I know a lot of people ship them, and there's been some real ship-worthy moments this uh, this volume. Ooh, I don't know if the lyrics are like referencing directly, or if it's just like a happy, fun song. We'll find out. Oh, that sounds like fun. So many feel good songs. Aww. <laughs> it's it's kind of a Ruby Penny song, guys. It's kind of what it feels like. Oh, it's uh, okay. Good night sounds familiar. Oh my god, I'm loving this. I am loving this. It's just so far. Oh, there she is. I love her. I'm trying to... Because, I mean, there is some things in here, like the reference to victory, the reference to love that could be like related back to the story itself, but it also just feels like it's kind of a hack, yeah. Oh! Do they have Vegas in Red? <laughs> Whoa! Yes, I love it. It's just, it's just a, it's just a feel good. It's a feel good. Let's dance, party, celebrate, and and truly enjoy what was kind of the last fun, crapless moment. Really was before everything went to heck. I'm just, it's so, it's so funky, guys. I can't take, I can't take the funk. It's it's overwhelming amounts of funk. Yes. All right, guys. So the the Ruby Roller Disco is happening. Am I right? Or am I right? I just I just can't stop grooving. This is like my ex. Oh, that's in this. Yes, it's all. <laughs> so he was a little alarmed at first, I'll say, but then he was clearly kissing her back in the song we saw before. Yes. Oh my God, guys. Another, another, another instant favorite. I think Brand New Day is still my favorite, but all right, let's read. Um, this is the first song that plays during the election party scene and episode Night Off. Very disco pop again. Also more themes of love and being with the ones you love, celebrating the good things in this world. It also features good old Lamar Hall for the rap break. I live for the Lamar moments. Um, the lead vocalist on this track is a man named Santee C duetting with Casey. Very cool. The line at the end of the... Uh, second verse where they say okay goodnight is a reference to Casey's band that she performs with called okay goodnight that's what it was a reference to okay um all right guys we got two left that was very fun I loved it so can we just all agree that the ruby roller disco is happening I can't even skate but I will learn for the ruby roller disco let's go next one next one before I get too excited and go out of my mind um until the end. Something tells me this one's gonna be a little bit more heavy. Yep. But we've had like all funky ones and power rock ones so far. So we were due for a slower one. Is this gonna be, is this gonna be sad? Is this gonna make me cry? This better not make me cry. This better not make me sad. There's a lot to be sad about at the end of the movie. Aww. It's gone without a trace. <sighs> 
voice. Oh God, I know the moment. No, this is, oh no, 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 no. Is this the moment I think it is? Don't lose hope, baby. I love that we've taken now tears and pain and used it as watering, giving life to something. Is this the moment where she saw Summer? Was that, is this, that's what it looks like. And let me tell you, that was a crushing moment. That was an absolutely crushing moment. Um, but in true Ruby fashion, it's like, even when she's doubting, like, what is it? What is, what are we even doing? There's still that, there's always that hope. There's always that hope. And that's why Ruby's Ruby. <sighs> to live free or die, it's all the same. The enemy was right. There's no reclaiming. No. In waves of shame. But she, she brought her to her knees, you know, guys. references silver eyes a picture me beside her and pray that I'll inspire I promise I'll be here until the end she's not gonna give up that's not what she does it doesn't matter how many times you bring her to her knees Till they've done everything they possibly can. Which she did. She did stare with pride into the face of fear. Even if it was only for a minute. Because we're, we're here for not just the bad moments, but and the good moments. And should we fall to darkness? This power I will harness I promise I'll be here until the end Oh, I love that the way the art's done We get to see what she's looking at in this summer the end. I believe you, I believe you I know there's a, no matter how awful she may feel No matter what you've done to her or shown her Hang on It's not going to break her. And that's why she's Ruby. Yes, she's she's a person. And of course, she's going to have these times where she feels like, God, they're really, what really is there? Like, what are we even doing? But she will never lose her resolve. That's why she's her. And yes, Salem brought her to her knees for a moment, for a moment, but so help her, like, don't get used to that because she's not. And, and even when she did, there's Yang helping her right back out, you know. Um, and that's why what they have with each other, that love, that bond, family, friendship is so important. Because 
And those brief moments where you do doubt yourself, that's why you have these people around you to help you. And it's just, I just, when they, when they put summer in, I could, I knew, I knew where it was going and it still got me. Um, all right. Until the end, this song is a nice soft ballad that leads us into the tone at the end of the season. It plays over Ozpin's speech during the last episode, The Enemy of Trust. Cool thing to note about the song is that it is both sung and composed by Casey. <gasps> Casey! Good job! Which means it was created by Casey with Jeff most likely just helping with the mastering of the track for quality, right? But it was it was all her. The prevailing thought that this is a Ruby-centered song. That's what I would have thought, too. Her struggling with doing all that she can for any and everyone. There is also references to light filling her eyes and harnessing her power, which is, I got that as well. I saw that as a reference, perhaps, to the silver eyes and that ability. Um... This is why I love Ruby the character and Ruby the show, because you can do a lot. You can take away people we care about. You can crush our spirits. You can pit us against each other. You can drag us through the mud. And when I say us, I mean the characters on Ruby. But there is something innate in Ruby. There is a hope that is almost like supernatural that you just can't ever destroy. And that, that is what will keep everything going. And that's beautiful. And that's why, like, even when I talk about Iron Man, say, like, he crossed the line. I'm like, but I'm going to put an asterisk next to that because... If this show has taught me anything, it's to never lose hope. And I think that's that. And I mean, the story is obviously amazing, but that feeling is like what keeps me coming back and what keeps me so invested and so engaged by what's going on in the characters and everything. That's what keeps me coming back. You know, um, that was beautiful. Oh my God, Casey beautiful work. Awesome job. Um, honestly, just a little aside about just the power of Casey's vocals and, and her songwriting abilities as well. Now it's, it's so sweet because I feel like we've, I say watch, but more like heard her grow. And there's, there's this kind of like beautiful pride that goes along with being a Ruby fan that like we've watched this company and everything that they dreamed of this team, you know, um, everything about that grow. And also just like hearing Casey's voice grow. Cause she was amazing to begin with. And I do, I do go back and listen to a lot of the volume one music, um, pretty frequently, but she just keeps on getting better and better and better. So it's just, I just love that. I love, 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 love that. Okay. On to the last song guys, the last one, let's wrap it up. And I think I know what this one is going to be. Yep. Another really good one. I could already tell from when it played. Coming directly from the point of Oscar. Always a chance that we might remain in ignorant bliss. Most of and now and now and then we're getting into it. Yes. Right. And then we spent a lot of time being safe from the storm on the show. Got to turn this one up a little bit. Right. Kind of coming back to that. I hope they never have to line. But sometimes you can't avoid it. Yeah. Yes. 
It is literally a cloud over your vision. Oh, that's such a good line. Who will you be when it's hard to make the right decision? Because it's not always easy. We're not always in a good season. Hmm. Who are you going to be when, when it really counts? Such a good song, too. Yep. It doesn't take long or very much, sadly, for everything to come apart. Right. Yeah, who are you going to be when just... Everything, yeah. Huge loss. A huge change of your way of life. Right, such a good point. Kind of a kind of like following along with the the monologue. Mm -hmm. Right. Will you make your decisions out of fear or out of love? Oh, and, I, and, 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 and we're, I love how, like, as the song asks more questions, it gets more into it, like, we ramp up more. I just love it. It starts out very, very kind of like an ominous calm and then just ramps up to this where it's like, yeah, you know what? Life happened in a horrible way and you realize who you really are in the face of adversity, who are you going to be? But... Oh, fear that we'll succeed. That, that's some heavy stuff right there. Yep. Right. The greatest fear is fear itself. That's the thing. If you give in to fear, you become just like Salem. That, and I think that's what she was after. Right. Yup. When they're exact, when you have nothing to gain from it and you're just in the face of adversity, what will you decide? Yeah. Will you recognize that person you become? Ah, uh, just so deep, so deep, so deep, and so, just so on the nose. Oh my god, guys. Oh my god. Oh, it has... Okay, now it's gonna try to play another one. Is that... I don't... Uh, let's see. Is that... I don't have another one on my playlist. Was that all there was to my playlist? Hang on, let me see. No, that's the last one on my playlist. Okay. I... So I had heard a lot more of this one just because I think it played as, like, the end credits... Um, if I'm remembering that correctly, and I have to say, um, even at the time when I heard it, I remember feeling so, like, moved by it, that, like, that is such a good point, that in so many cases, and this case is no exception, it's great to say things about how you're going to be a hero, it's great to say things about, it's great to say things, it's great to have, but when you're pushed into a corner... Will you even recognize the person you become? And I think that's very, very profound. So let's read. The song plays over credits at the end of the volume. It is also Oscar's theme. Oh! It, it, oh, wow. I didn't even put that together. That's awesome. Just as the main team members have their own songs, I burn... Okay. I burn mirror, mirror from shadows, etc. This is his theme and uses the lay motifs from earlier Oscar-centric scenes in the side. did not even realize that. Um, this song is the very central theme of this volume. Do you trust and love and the people around you, or do you let the fear that surrounds you control and direct your actions? Great end to a great OST. I could not agree more. Um, guys, I think I sh give me some time to let it sink in a little bit. Cause I know I say this about every volume, 
but I think this might be, I think this might be my favorite one. For one thing, there's just an awful lot of really great peppy melodies sprinkled throughout the soundtrack, which I'm always a fan of. But the ones that do go with a heavier tone, they hit. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, you could say that about any really good Ruby song though, you know what I mean? But man, do they really hit. Um, we also get a lot of experimentation here. Um, we get a lot more new vocalists, uh, Casey writing a song, things like that, which I really love. Um, and just that, that end, that end to the volume, I gotta say, it really is. I love how we're bookending. We begin with Trust Love, which is about this, you know, just believe in the people you love and you'll see the truth. And that's kind of the positive version of it. And then at the end, we have kind of the same, the same um, message, but a little bit more of like, now we're on the other side of it. Now Ironwood's made his decision. And now it's like, can you be happy with the decisions that you made when the chips were down? Did you recognize the person you became when everything went to heck and you had to decide what was right to do next? Um, and I think that's a lot to dwell on for us, for the characters on the show. And they left us on quite the ending in volume seven and picking back up with these motifs in the next volume. I think we're really in for what I'm sure is going to be a very philosophically engaging, but painful, <laughs> but painful debacle. Um, I loved the soundtrack. Uh, Brand New Day is still MVP. Um, but it's, it's so hard to say that because there's so many good ones on here. I love the, I love that Casey wrote one. I love that we have different vocalists. I um, I, I love, um, some of the more serious toned songs of this volume because they just hit so well with the points they're trying to make on the show as well. Um, wonderfully done. I mean, as all, I really have never heard a Ruby soundtrack that I'm like, eh, like I love them all, but I do think this one, this one's definitely, I think, at least going to be in my, like, my top three. I really do have to let it sit a little bit because you're getting me right off of the, right off of the, like, high that I get off of, of doing these reactions. And I don't want to, I don't want to, like, jump the gun and be like, oh, it's my favorite. Um, but I know for a lot of you, this is your favorite, and I can definitely see why. So, guys, um, excellent, excellent soundtrack. Loved it. Excellent volume. <sighs> I am both excited and scared for what's coming next. Many of you have told me without giving away anything directly that volume eight is going to break me as a human being. <laughs> and I think you're correct. If this show is, if this show has taught me anything, it's that like prepare, there's always that running theme of hope, but like while we're showing you, there's always hope. We're going to kind of break you. <laughs> And just see how strong that hope really is. It's an experimentation with hope, really. Can you keep the hope even while they're breaking you? Find out with me in volume eight, guys. I cannot, absolutely cannot believe I'm going to be current soon. And I am so excited for what's coming next. So, um, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching and listening along with me today. I am going to immediately put the soundtrack on my playlist so that I can just dwell on it even more and just like, just savor it like a fine wine, you know, just mm, get all the right notes in there and everything. You know how it is. You know how it is. So um, as always, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Please be sure to join me next time for volume flipping eight and we will watch it together. Bye for now, guys.